I'm very excited for my next guest, Deron Thomas. What's going on, man? Uh, nothing much, man. Glad to join you. Good to hear from you. Long time. Yeah, it's been a minute. Um, yeah, let's just get right into it. So right now, there's a lot of I want to get into um, with UM, running backs, your thoughts on, on some things. But I want to talk mm -hmm. about coaching right now. You're coaching at East St. John, where you went to high school, graduated from, had, had a good career, obviously. What, what's it like been, um, what's it been like coaching it, and what made you kind of want to get into it? It's actually, it's been pretty fun. I mean, I, uh, I love the kid. Like I said, it's my alumni. So to kind of give back to the youth and to kind of help with the program. I came in with the new, we have a new head coach. He's been here the amount of times since I've been here. We're going on year four. So his name is Brandon Brown. So just excited to kind of get the program back going where we got it going at. We have a good group of kids and we're just trying to compete and do what we have to do. So we're just trying to get us a state championship and help get these kids to the next level. What about the transition to, into coaching? Was it something that you always wanted to do? Was it something you kind of grew into? And then what year will this be for you there? Yeah, there's always been a passion. Coaching is something that even when I played, I was always a student of the game. So I was always a guy who knew the game inside out, be able to help some of the younger guys and teach some of the other guys the, the right way, just the knowledge of the game, and all the playing and running back position. So uh, it's always been a calling for me. And for the previous eight years before that, I was working with Foot Locker. I was a store manager at Foot Locker for the past eight years prior. And I decided to get into the coaching ranks after that. And um, like I said, I'm glad I made that decision. I'll be going on year four this year. This is my fourth year coming up. So uh, it'd be great. You know, it's great to be back. Like I said, it's great to get back to the kids. We have a real good group of guys. I'm just excited for what we have in store. Just at the running back position and talked about your success a little bit, but just what are some things that, that are important to you to teach to your guys about that position? What, what are either some traits or, or something that you really look forward to um, or, or want to, to have at that running back position? Um, I mean, some of the traits that I look for, the first thing is understanding that running back is bigger than just running the football. You know, Coach Saul, one of my, my first running back coach at Miami, he always would tell us, you know, to get on the field, it was you had to pass for tech and you had to do all the other things right. He would always say that at this level of football, you're going to always have premier running backs who can run the football. So what are the other things that you can do to separate yourself from the pack? You know, ball security, technique, reading holes, pass protection, understanding defenses, understanding coverages, uh, just pretty much being like another – extra set of eyes on the football field. You know, by us being in the backfield, we're back there with the quarterback. So we'll see the same thing he sees. So being able to identify those different things and seeing those different things, it actually, it makes for a better offense as a whole. So that's that's one of my biggest things I do with my running backs now, trying to teach them everything. You know, I want them to know coverages, blitz keys, blitz pickups, you know, um, film watching, just – you know, like I said, ball security, how to finish runs, how to be tough, you know, everything other than just running the football. Because like I said, anybody who halfway good at football, you give him the football, he'll be able to run. But it's the other tangibles that go along with it that separates the good backs from the great backs. I was curious, to, I'm curious about your, your take on, on Miami's current running backs. Um, maybe what you're seeing with, with each of these guys, with, with Cameron Harris, maybe what you see from him. And then also, you know, I'm curious what you think about Don Chaney, Jalen Knighton as well. All three, you know, kind of different <clears throat> skilled backs uh, bring different things to the table. I'm curious if you could just kind of analyze each of their games um, from what you've seen from them. I actually like the running back situation that we have right now. It's a Cam Harris, a guy I've been following since his freshman year. So watch him kind of grow and mature in this extra years. Back is going to be big for him as far as reaching that full potential that he – uh, displayed his freshman year, and um, just the, the 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 new guys that came in, Don Chaney and Jalen Knighton. I'm a big fan of those guys. I think Don Chaney is going to be special. I think he's going to be special. I think uh, him and Knighton, they have they're a good combo to go along with each other. But I really like what Coach Diaz and DVD and the rest of that coaching staff have going with that running back position. And then I see this recruiting class here. We kind of went with some bigger guys with. Cody Brown and Dad Franklin, so that'll just be a sorry, that'll just be another way to um, have that room more stockpiled and 
have that room ready, you know, to have different types of bags for different types of games, different types of situations. And I like the versatility in that running back room. You know, we have some of the vets. We have some younger guys who got some experience last year. They're going into year two. Then you have the incoming freshmen, some of your bigger, physically bigger uh, guys. But overall, I think that group, I think that group is going to be good. I'm excited to see how we're going to start out the season. Uh, you know, we have a big game week one. So I'm just really excited about what those guys have. I hope Chaney will be healthy and ready to go for that game. But I definitely see the promise that we have. With I think we can go a long way with Harris, Chaney, and Knighton with those younger guys pushing them. But it all starts up front. So, you know, that, that, that O-line, we're improving up front. That will help those guys out as well. You know, you, you mentioned – positive things with all those guys and, and the two young guys, but you mentioned Chaney, you think he has a chance to be special. Um, what is it about him that, that you like or that you saw last year that, that gives you that indication that maybe he's got a chance to be one of those good ones to come through? My I, like, I like his combination of size, speed, and vision. You know, he's one of a thicker build guy. Um, he's a guy who I, I, I followed him in high school. So I saw some of his work in high school. So I, that's when I started kind of liking the way he plays and, just some of the flashes that I want to see from some of his spring practices or a couple of the runs that he may have made in game. I just knew he needed a little bit more development. It's tough for a freshman running back to come in and, and, and play superior, you know, especially when you're, the rest of the offense is still getting better as a whole, you know, versus where you're coming in, where you're running behind a five first round offensive lineman. It's a little bit easier because it's a little better play. But when the whole offense is kind of coming together as one, takes a little more time for running back to develop. And, you know, with the COVID situation, that did, that made it tougher for younger guys for that that film time, that meeting time, that study time, like in-house versus having meetings and, you know, different ways. That made it a little bit tougher for their development and growth. But I think he has those tools. Like I said, that combination of size, speed, vision, I think he'll be, he'll be, uh, he'll be pretty good. I'm excited to see what he has. Before, obviously, before we uh, did the video, I chatted with you just a little bit about um, kind of want to get your take on um, Miami. I got a commitment from someone in your area there in Louisiana with Landon Ibieta, their the wide receiver. He gave me a little, little, uh, you know, tidbit about him. Just kind of, you know, I know Miami fans would be interested, but what do you know about him? How much have you seen him? And then your thoughts on his abilities? Man, Landon, he's a guy who he can play. He can flat out play. He's a guy who he's dominated on that seven on seven circuit. He has a good, he has good film. You know, he, um, he, I never met him personally, but he comes off as a hard worker. He played with the bootleggers and that team normally produces some really, really good guys. So for you to be able to go on that team and that circuit and produce the way you produce, that says a lot about a kid, especially in Louisiana where we stockpile with talent. So for you to get on that team and get to that level, and produce. I'm excited for him. I mean, me and my friends, some of my some of the former players who I talk to all the time, we're excited about it. We, we watch film all day. You know, we watch film, follow guys. We give our take on guys. We kind of follow the recruiting process. And um, Landon is a guy who I think he'll be a bigger, better version of a Braxton Burial just because of the physical size. About six feet, about 185. You know, Braxton was a little shorter, more compact. But he runs good routes. I like the way he lands and I like the way he finished, you know. You're looking at his clips, he he does things where he'll tr he's going to try to finish the play if it means cutting across the field or running somebody over or you know making a move on a guy. That's one of his traits that'll that'll carry over good to the next level because coaches they love the effort guy. The college coaches love that guy who's going to give that extra effort, and he looks like he's an example of a guy who will put in that amount of work to be in the position that he is. And um, his high school, like I said, they're in the same classification as us. We're in 5A, which is the top, the top class in Louisiana. So I would love to play him. Hopefully we meet up in the playoffs. You know, So hopefully we can get him. And one of the things that stands out to me about Landon, you know, he's a guy that a lot of people like yourself um, speak highly of, but his rating isn't real high. And and I, Deron, well, we've talked over the years a little bit just about some of the recruiting. You feel like there's some guys that are pretty good players either they could go under the radar a little bit. Um, and I was curious if you could just maybe address some of that. Is that something you've seen and why does that happen? And and that's not to say that Louisiana doesn't produce talent. It's obviously well known for that. I want to get more into that a little bit later, but 
there are some guys that, that kind of go under the radar. What, what's your take on that? And is that something you've seen over the years? Yeah, that's fine. I, you're right. Because when I saw Landon's, um, his, when I look at his profile and I see his ranking, I think he's underrated, you know, and that happens a lot in Louisiana. It's like we kind of, we're, we have one major university, which is LSU, and we have a lot of programs that are right under the caliber of LSU that produces talent, but we have more talent than just those schools can offer. So some of the out of states is almost like we feel like, you know, some of them, they're missing out on some guys who they can p- potentially get, you know, or potentially come and see. Now, I know for these past pretty much year and a half with the COVID situation, that made things really, really tough. So that's probably one factor for Landon by not being able for coaches to come out and see him and come on campus and maybe get him out to camps and all of those good things until this summer. So that could slow up his recruiting process. But he's a guy who, with his senior year still coming up, and uh, I see, I read an article, I think he's going to have a lot of, he's losing a lot of starters, he's losing his quarterback. His quarterback was pretty good as well from last year. So he's going to be on a new, he's going to pretty much have a lot of new faces on his offense. So it's going to be a lot on his shoulders. But I think from a talent perspective and a, a work perspective, he'll be able to do that. And I think, you know, with the rankings getting updated, if he produces the way he has been, it'll probably go up. But I'm glad that the coaching staff, they didn't just get caught up into stars in their recruiting process where they were looking for the tape talent. And that's one of the things that I preach to my guys. Don't get caught up into how many stars and how many offers. And at the end of the day, you can only pick one school. So it's all good for social media, Naj. You know, social media makes that a big deal about their top list and all of those good things. But at the end of the day, when you make that one decision, those other 10, 20, 30, 40 offers, they'll be irrelevant. They're going to be with your college program going forward. And I think Landon, by him coming to Miami, coming in underrated, he'll come with a chip on his shoulder. And we just need, we, we, know we're, we need a guy who at that receiver position who can just take that elite next step, you know, in my opinion anyway. So, yeah, we have a lot of slept on talent here, you know, even on my personal team, you know, we have a receiver who's really, really special as well. He's just a little bit lighter, but he can flat out play. And, you know, we're still we're still on the eight. We're still behind the eight ball. So I would like to say to those coaches out of state, you need to come. His name is Colin Harris. You need to come and check him out. He can really flat out play for football. Flat out play football. We, like I said, we're in the seven on seven circuit. We play every Wednesday. We play against some of the top teams in the state. We play against Arch Manning. We actually played them on yesterday. We play them every Wednesday. We're in a seven on seven league. And, he, he pretty much dominates every week. You know, there ain't too many guys who can stick him as well. So that's another reason that I would love to play Mandeville as well, just to see those two guys kind of go against each other because Colin is a guy who whatever team gets him, they're going to be getting a gym. And he will probably he, – he, he's not even finished maxing out his potential yet. So, yeah, we're slept on in Louisiana. I don't know why, but – that's, you know, we like to be the underdog at times, and that's why we just like to work our butts out. Like I tell my just push your head down and just keep working. And when that one school comes who really, really you fall in love with, you'll make the right decision, and then you won't even care about the process that it took to get to where you are. So that's kind of what I preach to my guys. And certainly I remember seeing, you know, you showed me the film of Kyle. Yeah, his, his film looks good. He's one of those guys that makes plays. So certainly a guy to watch for moving forward. I'm curious, I've always kind of, you know, just over the years following a little bit of Louisiana recruiting, obviously a lot of those top guys end up at LSU. Um, it's, it's just kind of been like that over the years. And obviously LSU is a top program, but it just seems like there there have been some times like yourself, a guy comes out of there to go to Miami. And Miami's gotten some some guys out of Louisiana over the years. But what's your take on maybe the difficulty or um, – of getting guys out of state from LSU that are that top level guy, um, you know, maybe for a school like Miami, just kind of your, your thoughts, maybe what you've seen over the years and obviously grown up in the area. Well, you know, with LSU being that top program, I think some people already assume that a top kid here, he's going to go to LSU. That's what most people would just assume because uh, historically for the most part, they're going to get all of the top guys, you know, and, and that helps a lot, but, there are also a lot of cases where some of those guys who maybe wasn't as high on LSU's radar, 
or maybe they just missed, you know, maybe they just misevaluated. And maybe they took the wrong guy compared to another guy who they had an opportunity to take. Uh, and uh, he and that kid went to another program out of state and, and just pretty much took care of business and dominated at the level that they played at. So I just think that with LSU only being one school, with the amount of talent that we have in the state, there's a lot to go across the board. Uh, we have some other top programs in Louisiana who are starting to kind of come up into the ranking, who sort of really put their name into that recruiting tool. But still, we have enough talent to where we still have some guys who are potentially missing out here and there because number situations. And then this year, it's not even easier with the COVID and some of the smaller programs, probably from financial situations and, you know, maybe not able to bring in as many kids in that recruiting class because they had to keep all of their seniors from last year if those kids wanted to come back. So we're dealing with that a lot right now. So, but I will tell, I will say, like I said earlier, man, we got some talent here. We have some talent here in Louisiana. And and we got some guys who can flat out play. And you don't have, and LSU can't get them all. So come, come, you know, come shop, come with us. Come, come look at what we have to offer. You know, come to you St. John, see what we have to offer. We're just one of many, you know. So that's the biggest thing I would say to all of those out-of-state programs. Come look, you know, come find us. Sure. What do you remember about your recruiting process? And for those that don't remember, you know, your, your recruiting class, 2004 there, Miami, you're part of a running back group that, uh, you know, Charlie Jones comes in, you know, Andrew Johnson, Bobby Washington was a part of that class. And also a guy that didn't make it, but did take an official visit, Adrian Peterson. For, um, mm -hmm. And I remember when he, when he made his official visit, I remember talking to Eric Winston about it at the time. And he was like, man, that guy's just different. Like he, he just remembers uh, just kind of different, different kind of a guy. But your class that you came in with at running back, and we talk about competition all the time in recruiting guys that come in either with other guys uh, at their own position. But what was it like for you coming in and, and you know, and also touch on why Miami was a good fit for you um, coming out of high school. And then, yeah, just what was that like with, with all those other running backs coming in in that same class, highly regarded guys? Well, the recruiting process for me was pretty crazy as well. You know, I said I had a lot of offers and a lot of uh, programs that wanted my services, but I was always a kid that I was a student of the game. I always loved Miami to begin with. So with me, my love for Miami came prior to me getting recruited by Miami. I was a fan back in the day when we had Jamie German and Yatiel Green and, and Ray Lewis and when we lost to Tommy Frazier and Nebraska back in those days. So, you know, I, Lamar Thomas and the whole nine. So for me, it was an opportunity where once I found out, like from my production, that I was going to be one of those premier caliber recruits. And when Miami came knocking for me, it was more about, that's where I wanted to go, and they wanted me, and I and I made that decision, and I'll never regret it, even though I know, like I said, when we signed, we signed four of us. But like you said, we compete. It's all about competition. You never know. In college football, you never know what's going to happen three, four, five years into tenure. A lot of things change because by year five, I was the last, I was the last one. You know, for every reason, different guys made, well, made different decisions to go elsewhere, but like me and Charlie, we're like best friends. I talk to Charlie every day. Me and Charlie talk every single day. So and me and Andrew keep in contact a lot as well. So I built a brotherhood with those guys. I love them like my brothers, you know. So for for me, it's bigger than football. In Miami, that's another thing about Miami that I always respect because it's bigger than football with us. Like, we'll talk for hours and hours and football won't even come up. You know, we're just talking life and about kids and families and, you know, just – this normal, normal life things. And that's the brotherhood that that we were embedded when we got to Miami and, and that you, it meant something. And it still means something. We're just trying to get it back to the standard that it was. But for me, it was more about that opportunity to build a brotherhood with some guys that when we're on the football field, it's straight competition. When we're on the football field, we're the best of friends. And that's another thing I like to preach to my guys, you know, competing and competing in practice competing in workouts, competing on the conditioning, competing on the games, you know, competing at all times, competing in school, in the classroom, you know, in the cafeteria, you know, everything about just being a leader and competing to be the best and striving to be the best. There's nothing wrong with striving to be the best at all things, even though you're going to lose at times, but there's nothing wrong with wanting to win.
So that's what I try to preach to my guys as well. And we did that. Like I said, we we had four of us signing our recruiting class. And all four bought different things to the table. And all four were some really talented guys. But when I decided to make that decision, it was more or about me. And it really wasn't really about those other three. It just worked out perfectly that those guys, even though Bobby Washington ended up not actually getting on campus with us, but me, Charlie, and Andrew, we competed every day, but we built a great relationship with each other. And me and Andrew, we talk a lot as well. You know, and and I will say this, Frank Gore and Tyrone Moss, they did a great job of leading us the right way when we first got there. So they gave us a great example of what to look up to our freshman year. And then after freshman year, Frank went to the NFL and we had Tyrone and he did an excellent job of um, just letting us see what it looks like. And, and I miss him to this day, you know, rest in peace to my man. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just the competition and the brotherhood. That's one of the biggest things. It's like this college may be three, four or five years, but you're going to be brothers for life. We're going to be brothers for life. So we went 2021, you know, we going 17 years in with those guys and, We'll talk on the phone right now, and it's like we never left. And now we not we don't see each other as often, but we're talking. It's still like we were in a locker room or we were in a field meeting room. And that's one of the best things about Miami. And that's one of the things. You can never get back that time of meeting brothers because football going to be football everywhere. And they're going to have fun everywhere. You just want to find what program fits you and building a brotherhood. Yeah, that's great. And I <clears> certainly <throat> remember the competition and, and all of you guys and, and kind of just looking from it from afar afar and I knew you guys were close too and that I saw it then and, and I'm sure it couldn't have always been easy with playing time and things like that for you guys but um that, that's cool you guys still keep in touch do you do you have any like really good recruiting stories um either by Miami or another school or anything you want to share with, with the memory that you have um going through that process as one of the top guys in, in the country there just kind of going through it oh uh, I mean we had a lot of stuff. We had a lot of guys who came visit over the years, a whole bunch of guys. So it's more about whenever we would get our biggest things from our running backs, we took pride in our hosting our recruits. Like we took pride in if a guy came in an official visit and we were his host, we wanted them to commit. You know, we, we wanted to be a reason that this kid came to Miami because of his visit, we showed him the ropes and he, you know, built up a good rapport with the guys and he decided that, that was the program that he wanted to um, make his home for the next few years of his college life. So there's tons of different stories and people, you know, but overall, like I say, it was just, it was just great to be in that position to where the coaches would pick us, you know, to kind of get in guys and let those guys commit and, come into the program and then you'll always have that relationship with a kid who you hosted him on his official visit. So when he actually, if he actually comes to the school, you guys already have the connection. So you can kind of be like a big brother to him to begin with. And that was one of the biggest things. Once again, it all falls back into that, that brotherhood that we have at the youth. So it's like, no matter who it is, no matter where you're from, you know, if, if you got that you on your chest and you bust your butt and you sweat every day on green tree, you're going to be all right with us. And that's one of the, that's kind of one of the major things for me, you know, for the guys who didn't come, you know, they, they made the decision that was best for them and their families. And I, you know, we wish them the best, but of course, ain't nothing like the you. So they missed out. For the guys that, that you talked about, you know, sweating on, on green tree. I'm curious, a guy that maybe if you could name a guy that you played with at UM that maybe what, that you thought was either really good or, or you felt like that was a little bit either underrated either by the media, the fans, even the coaches maybe that you thought was just a good player or either brought a lot to your team. Is there one guy that – one or two guys that maybe stand out to you, um, Duran? I would, I would say when I first got there, I would say like a Ryan Moore example. Like I had been following Miami for years before I even came, and I already had the new – Ryan Moore before I actually met Ryan Moore. So I already knew the high school production and the rankings and the recruiting, but he was a guy that I really was like, man, this dude here is like a next level type talent, you know, just from the way he played football and basketball. Like the same way he can go on the football field, we can go in the gym and he'll do the same thing. That was pretty impressive, you know, and getting at Miami, I always tell some of my friends, 
we we see it so much that some things don't even surprise us the way it would surprise the outside looking in. I mean, you can see a guy, you know, you'll see a guy. I can remember my freshman year, Roscoe Parrish. Like the, the the speed of the game changed so fast that those guys, it was just amazing how fast and quick they were. So for me, a guy who in high school, I wasn't a big back. You know, I wasn't I wasn't 200, 220 pounds coming in as a freshman. I was 180 pounds, 185 pounds. So to actually see some of those guys, they were big. So it gave me confidence from a physical stature. It was like, okay, well, you don't have to be 220 pounds to be good at this level. So just getting advice from those guys or motivational tips from those guys from, you know, working and, you know, trying to bust your butt and just getting inspiration from those guys. But the, the speed of the game was, like Roscoe and Samoris and Darnell Jenkins and Kelly Jennings, Marcus Maxey, those guys were like DVD. These dudes were so fast that by the time I met DVD, I had them already seen fast. So his fast was fast, but I already saw fast. But when I first got there, it was like I'd never seen that before. I can remember a play, I would tell my running back, we talked about the speed of the game. We were doing seven on seven. And the coaches can't be on the field. It was offseason, so the coach is not allowed to be out there. So the quarter, Kyle and Kirby, those guys were just in, um, Brock. Those guys are just running the offense. You know, got they got command of everybody. So I may have caught a check down route. It was like a road right, right out the backfield, right over the ball. So when I ran my route, I didn't see anybody. So I'm thinking, like high school, I'm about to catch this ball, turn around, and just get up field and go score a 40, 50 yard touchdown. But the closing speed, I can remember by the time I caught the ball, soon as I attempted to make a move, Kelly Jennings, he was like right there. He just pat me on my hip. You know, that just signaled you down. And he, he tapped me so fast, it was like, man, where he came from? Like, like, I don't know where he came to this day. It's still like, where did he come from? And that just let me know, like, this is another level. You know, but to play with those guys and some of those guys, to get into the NFL and see those guys and to talk back to some of those guys, it's just, you know, good to know that you were able to be a good teammate and you have respect from your peers and from your teammates. I have a lot of guys who, like I said, I, talk, I can talk to to this day and we have a mutual respect for each other. And that that's what validates to me that, you know, I took care of business the way I was supposed to from my peers' perspective to where we can see each other 20 years later and we'll mutually respect each other and we can kind of joke and laugh about, uh, just different, you know, just different stories on the field. Because for us, practice was tougher than the games. Practice was tougher than games most of the time. It was it's tough going against our defense every single day in practice. So by the time you got to the game, it was almost like you're not even really phased to them as much because we do this every day. We were them boys every single day. And that's another thing about Miami, the competition on the field across the board, not just in the running back room. Like every position pretty much commanded their group and they showed you a standard of this is how it goes at Miami. And for freshmen, it's always tougher because you're new. You know, you're coming from being a man at your high school. You're coming from being all world and all of the accolades. So now you back to you a scrub. You know, you're a scrub now. You got to carry the ball, carry the playbook. You know, you got to sing in a team meeting. Just different little stories that when you're a freshman, you got to start the process all over. But I think, thank, I thank God for it every day. You know, I thank God for every day. And, I mean, I just feel like everything happens for a reason. And I mean, God don't make mistakes. So the way everything turned out, I guess that, that, was just, that was just his plan of what he wanted me to do with mine. And I'm going to do such. Yeah, that's great. And obviously everybody's goal would be to be able to stay in touch with people. And I think that's great. That's That's great to hear that you're able to, you know, stay in touch with those guys. And um, obviously a lot of great memories back then, but I'm sure you've shared some uh, together since then. Um, and I have another question for you about your teammates. So with the new name, image, and likeness deal that's in place right now, if that was in place when you were playing, who do you think would have benefited the most from that? Or, or who do you think would be a guy that, that would have been very interesting to see how it would have played out for him while he was at UM, somebody you played with? I mean, it's easy, you know, Devin Hester would be an easy name to say. You know, Devin would have probably killed it with this, with the new image when it's just the, you know, just the uh, everything that he kind of brought to the table for the program and how he was. But I think at all time, man, I, I wish we would have had this when we played. 
I definitely wish we had this opportunity because there's a lot of money to be made and there's a lot of money that was made off of us that we never saw a dime of. And it would have been nice to be able to do things like signing autographs and getting paid versus sitting out for three hours, four hours, and you signed them memorabilia for countless hours for somebody else to go make money off of, you know, or you'll go to a party or an event or be headlined and it's, they'll tell you thank you, but they're charging $100 to get in, you know, so it would have been nice to have that opportunity to use your name to kind of promote it, but I guess for this newer guys, better late than never. I'm glad they did it. I actually think it's going to be good for those guys. You know, I just, you know, hopefully they got right leadership guiding them uh, leadership to guide them to do it the right way, you know, so don't get caught up into the wrong business with the wrong people and somebody still taking advantage of you because everybody will not have your best interest at heart when, when money gets involved with certain people. So for those guys, I would just say, you know, trust your circle and trust your mentors and be smart. Don't just, all money, not good money. So, you know, don't just take blood money because it's there and you don't know what comes along with that. So, but it would be, man, it'd be great to have. You know, there'd been a lot of days, there'd been a lot of days things would have been different if we were able to make some cash off of off of our name, image, and likeness. So yeah, that 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 one there is, I mean, it's big for college football. It's a game changer. And for a city like Miami and a program like Miami, you know, it's pretty much a selling tool. You know, it's a it's a, it's a selling pitch, you know. Being a man in Miami is going to be different than being a man in Columbia or Charleston and, you know, just different cities who it may be football, uh, college towns, but being running Miami is a little bit different and a little bit better. So that's what I would say to those guys, you know, all those recruits, you know, factor in everything, you know, factor in everything. If you can change the program. One group of guys, you can go in and help change the program. You don't have to worry about well, they ain't win this and that yet. Well, then you go there and you change it. You, you know, and, and that's what it comes in at. So I think that with all these different um, these different opportunities that these guys are going to have to be able to make profit, that definitely will help Miami. And it should help Miami, you know. Well, football, rich city, it's just Miami has a lot of other things to offer to go as well. But when a football team is rolling, is things is all you, you equivalent to the Dolphins and the Marlins with a football team rolling. So, you know, that'll be exciting. So I'm kind of excited to see how this will go going forward and just hope that it, uh, you know, stays in the good and nothing bad comes from it. Yeah, that's good. And that's a, that's a good way we'll wrap this thing up. But, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of great takes, man. It was definitely good catching up. I know we've chatted over the time over mm-hmm. time over the years, but I definitely wanted to kind of get you a little bit longer. Um, glad to th- hear things are going well. Obviously, best of luck to your to program this year. Um, keep coaching them up and, and yeah we'll, we'll stay in touch man it was good good chatting with you yeah we'll definitely be in touch and I appreciate you for uh, reaching out and like I say we contact each other I appreciate the quick responses and the honest opinions and evaluation you know we built up a long relationship over the years so I'm glad me and you are able to still kind of talk and it feels good talking back to you man you know it just feels good to kind of get back into the loop and I miss the game so Getting being able to coach it, it kind of fills that little void for me personally. And a lot of guys probably can attest to that as well. But yeah, it's it's great to be back involved in it. And like I say, I mean, we just I'm gonna just do what I gotta do to try to help my program be the best that we can be. So that's my biggest deal right now. Good, good. All right, man. We'll we'll talk soon. I'll, I'll let you get going. All right, man. Take care. Thank you. Go yeah. Kane.